Hey guys, welcome to another Q&A session from the Reaper blog. I'm John. Thank you for joining me today. We have a lot of great questions today, but first some news, some stuff that's going on in the uh, Reaper blog world. The YouTube channel has now passed over 14,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for subscribing, for watching the show, for commenting and sharing with your friends. Uh, it really means a lot to me. I, I don't do this just for myself. I do it for you guys. So I want you guys to watch it. Thank you so much. There's also a new Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash Reaper blog community. Uh, it's a new group that we've set up. It's linked to the Reaper blog Facebook page. Got a great community there. Lots of people helping each other. It's been a great addition to the, uh, the way I can help support you guys learning Reaper. And it's a great way to share your experience with other users. If you guys only subscribe and follow me on YouTube, please check out the Reaper blog website because we have courses there, there are text articles, there's stuff that doesn't get onto YouTube, plus there's years and years worth of content that you may not know about. So please check that out. Just a friendly reminder that that still exists and there's tons of great content there. And this video is sponsored by my patrons at patreon.com slash the Reaper blog. Patreon is a site that helps connect fans with the creators that they like and allows them to help fund new projects or keep a handle on the ongoing costs of creating content that you would enjoy. There's also ways that the creator can uh, give you some bonuses, bonus content, um, exclusive content. Uh, in my case, I have a Discord server that you guys can join and, and talk to each other. Sometimes I'm posting behind the scenes things and um, I'd like to get into doing a patrons only live stream as a regular sort of uh, perk for being a patron. Patreon has been a huge help for me for the Reaper blog. Um, I'm able to pay some of my bills. I'm able to fund uh, better equipment to make these videos better. I wouldn't be able to continue making these videos without the support from the fans through Patreon. So if you enjoy what I'm doing here, please consider being a patron. All right, now let's get into the Q&A. The first question comes from Pete Musgrove. I have a question that I think others may find interesting and is concerning monitoring volume. It seems to make sense that monitoring at a lowish level would minimize the effect of poor or no room treatment. I would appreciate your thoughts. Well, that is true and it does make sense that lower volume will excite the room to a lesser extent. You're still going to have the same problems. It's, it's still physics, it's geometry of your room. Um, you can predict what the problems will be through math. Yes, monitoring at a lower volume will reduce the amount that uh, things are ringing throughout your room. Uh, you're also not going to hear it as loud as you might need to to do a proper mix. There are issues with monitoring too loud and too low. You need to find the sweet spot for your room, for your own ears. If you only monitor low, you'll probably use too much compression to make it more audible. Really the only way around acoustics issues is to address the room itself. Buy acoustic treatment, put it up on the walls. It makes such a huge difference. It's one of the biggest improvements you can make for everything that you record and listen to in your room. Don't underestimate it, it's so powerful. And it's something that doesn't depreciate in value because it's always going to work. It doesn't wear out. It just sits on the wall and does its job and uh, makes everything that you hear in that room sound better. Next question comes from John Paul Leclerc. What's the best way you found to manage a large list of plugins? I find it difficult to locate plugins of certain types, compressors, reverbs, etc., because they're all named something unique. I'm using a combination of manual filtering, um, creating favorites lists, and also smart folders. I usually use smart folders to categorize by manufacturer because the manufacturer's name's always in the title of the plugin, it's very simple. I have a video on using smart folders. Uh, something else I found really helpful is the Rearrange Effects app. It's made by a Reaper user. It basically just takes that uh, list of plugins and lets you manipulate your favorites lists. Customize your folders a lot easier. Drag and drop to rearrange um, the way that they'll appear in the list. So um, I have a video on that as well. For smart folders, sometimes you need to do uh, sort of more advanced kind of uh, um, filter names. So for delay plugins, to do something like delay or echo or slap or replica, and replica is the name of one of the plugins that doesn't have any of those descriptions in its name, it should get everything else automatically. 
I will have links to those videos in the description of this video and on the website. So if you want to organize your plugins better, check those links out. Next question comes from Ryan Bailey. Do you have any videos on preparing your tracks for mastering, bouncing down, getting ready for mastering? Not for mastering, but I just did one for mixing, uh, preparing multi-tracks to send to a mixer. For mastering, it's pretty simple. Leave a bit of headroom, don't over compress. If you're using mix bus compression, EQ or anything on the master bus, consider doing two versions, just um, bypass the effects, export your mix, turn it on, export your mix. Make sure they're labeled and you do that the same thing for each song. So when your mastering engineer opens up those songs in his DAW, he knows what he's getting and he can choose the best one to continue the work with. The one with compression and things like that could give him a good idea of the vibe you want. And often the mix sounds totally different without those things, but he can reach that point and go further uh, with more care, with uh, more attention to detail. Something else you might find interesting for this topic is a podcast that Ian Shepard and I did, Mastering Show episode 22. Uh, we talk about why you shouldn't master on your mix bus. So check that one out. The next question comes from Chris Hurst. Do you know of any way to use a touchscreen controller, such as an iPad, to navigate around tracks in Reaper? For example, can you create macros that can jump to woodwind, jump to strings groups at the touch of a button? I have hundreds of tracks in my orchestral template. Navigating, scrolling up and down can be a bit of a chore. If I was able to jump straight to a particular section of the virtual orchestra with one push of a button, it would be a real time saver. One of the reasons this video is late is because I had to figure out a really good answer for this question. And what that ended up being, something on my phone, is a set of actions that I can trigger from my phone, that I can trigger from my phone, um, which will show an, so I'll just read the actions that I have here. Uh, show all tracks, show only selected tracks, show only tracks used at current position. So wherever the cursor is, um, it's going to look for media uh, that intersects that cursor position and it will hide all the other tracks. Uh, so any unused track, stuff without any media on it, will just disappear. Then same thing for time selection. And these are all custom actions. I'm going to do a video on this so you'll see all this in action and I'll even share um, as much as I can for this, because it's it's a little complicated. I can't just explain, I can't just talk about it. I'll have to show you, I'll have to look at what the actual custom actions are, uh, but stay tuned. I will have a video on this. I'll share as much as I can for um, uh, explaining how to do this on your own. After the time selection one, I have ones for specific groups of instruments. So vocals, bass, drums, guitars, keys, effects bus and VCA. And this is all stuff that's going to look at the track names. So it's uh, so if I press the drums button, it's going to only show me tracks named drums or the child tracks of a folder named drums. I usually have my stuff in folder tracks. I hit, hit this button, all the other tracks disappear. And I only see the drums. And then when I want to go back, I click that show all tracks button and I'm back to, and I'm back to seeing everything. It's a huge time saver. Just like you said, you can do this on a, a touchscreen thing. You can assign these actions to a MIDI controller if you wanted. You could just have them on a toolbar. That's pretty helpful as well. But yeah, definitely having a, a dedicated interface for things like this is pretty cool. And I got a lot of these ideas for things like uh, show only tracks used in time selection. Um, I got ideas from, for doing that from Junkie XL. So I'll have a link to that video. And when I have that other video made on how you actually set up actions like this, I will link to, I will come back and link to this video in the description. And besides doing it that way with Reaper's web control interface, uh, you can also use touch OSC or you can use uh, some of the other um, kind of like macro triggering apps. There was one I used a few times called Quattro, uh, but I think it's actually a subscription model and it didn't really do enough to keep it but I think what I figured out here is a pretty good solution. Um, and uh, it's certainly come in handy over the past couple weeks. Last question comes from Isaiah. I use Reaper for live recordings. What would be a good theme to use for me to have 80 meters on a single screen? Uh, so the default Reaper 5 theme is fairly large. You can't really put a lot of tracks on the screen at once. I see a lot of people using Reaper for live. 
with the Reaper 3 theme. Uh, it's a lot more compact. Uh, it's great for laptops as well. Uh, I forget the exact number of tracks you can have, but it's almost like 25% uh, more tracks uh, without any extra effort um, spread out across the screen. You can also use the option in the master track to display multiple rows of tracks when there's uh, the size available. And then you can have two or more rows of tracks on the screen at once. You can see all the faders, you can see all the, the input volumes at the same time. So I think that's probably going to be the best solution for you. And that's it for the Q&A session. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's time to thank some of my patrons. Here's a list of everyone in the $5 tier and above. These people have committed to uh, keeping these videos coming. There's a much shorter list of people in the $10 and up category. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Gordon McGlattery. Thank you, Mark Kilborn. Thank you, Luca Fusi. And thank you, Glenn Kiefer. You guys really, really help. So that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Join the Facebook group. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider being a patron at patreon.com slash the Reaper blog. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. See you guys. Bye.